Yo, welcome to the Geekiverse. I'm Jeff Pavlock, he's Josiah Leroy. We're here today to talk about Quantum Break. This guy just finished the game a few days ago. I did. I'm gonna ask you a whole bunch of questions about it so we can tell the folks at home about this game. Fantastic. First off, explain a little bit about this whole dynamic, this whole uh, video game meets movie thing we got going on. So in that sense, uh, this is, it's from Remedy, makers of Alan Wake, one of my favorite games of last gen. Great game. Fantastic. Uh, this. Basically, it blends their storytelling in a way that it shows you know, your typical cinematic video game cutscenes, gorgeous graphics for your, your regular gameplay, right. but it also wraps in four 22-minute Netflix-style episodes. So at the end of, let's say, Chapter 1, for example, okay. uh, you jump into an actual live-action produced episode. Where so you, physical people, no CGI, no rendering, anything like that? Correct. Com Interesting. Complete actual human beings right um with some pretty famous names actually um dominic monaghan uh aiden gillen from from uh, game of thrones it is shanghai knights oh yeah. if you remember <laughs> <I> that <laughs> lord ratbone lord ratbone <laughs> he's like 12th in line to the throne <laughs> um anyway your decisions actually affect the live action, which is freaking awesome. So they filmed multiple well, different see, Yeah, things. they must have filmed several different takes for that then. Absolutely. You come to points called junctions in the, in the story, and you choose one of two paths. And whatever path you choose, basically, that is where the, the story goes. You get your live action episode, you kick back with your pop, you go to the next episode... Right and you play 22 minutes later, it is awesome. So this is the kind of game that you can play through a couple times and have it be completely different from your uh, previous play. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And the nice part, I mean, there's not like a million endings. Okay. Like, for example, Heavy Rain. Right. I think there were 77 different endings for that. No joke. That, that's a lot of endings. That's a lot of endings. <laughs> this one, I think I got like 40 of them, by the way. So I, nice. I <laughs> got through that pretty good. With Quantum Break, because it was live action for mm. most of it, they could only do so much but you don't feel shortchanged. Okay. It feels like it's everything that they built it up to be. Sure. And uh, it's, in, in essence, it's just it's a satisfying way to play a game. Okay. Now here's, here's, here's the real important question. How good is this game? Is this, is this a great one? So it was my most anticipated game for 2016. That's a big honor. Uh, yes, yeah, for what it's worth. I think Gene listed DLC. <laughs> <laughs> Gene, we need you back, buddy. Come on, we do it. We do need you back, Gene. Uh, we need someone for Pete to smack every once in a while. I, uh, I reviewed it for our website, uh, so thegeekiverse.com. It is um, an 8.75 out of 10, That's in my score. opinion. That's a very solid score. So it, it, it's going to probably end up being one of my favorite games of the year. Mm -hmm. If it's in the game of the year discussion, um, I'd probably be surprised, if oh, that okay. makes sense. No, I, I know what you mean. Uh, there's, there's, that's a lofty honor. There's a difference. Absolutely. There's certain games that just feel game of the year. Right. I'm not quite sure this was there. Okay. But if it's not, it is just scraping the edge. Okay. Yeah. It, it's it's almost there. It's maybe one step away. It's not. Saying. Yeah, it's not Alan Wake where that was generational to okay. me. Okay. That, that's but, fair enough. Uh, you think that a game like this, though, with that kind of concept, which is, in my opinion, pretty revolutionary, you think this is going to have an impact on other franchises, other developers? Are they going to try to emulate uh, Quantum Break style? To a point. Okay. Because they executed it so well, Microsoft Studios. They had their plans for a TV studio. They surrounded it you know, with the Halo Nightfall series. They were going to do loads more stuff, probably surrounding Gears of War, uh, probably Forza, any of their major franchises. So when that plug was pulled, I was a little disappointed. And I think we're seeing the after effects of it with this. Okay. It was really well executed. The actors are big names, and big name actors don't always translate well to video games. Very true. We've, We've seen, seen that so many times. This is not the case. Right. Quantum Break is an exception. They are awesome. They're they're relatable, super interesting. It's one of the key things I put in the article uh, is the performance, not only on screen for the live action, but also for the, the cutscenes and the voiceovers. Mm -hmm. It's not easy to do. Right. And you would almost not even tell the difference in certain aspects from the cutscenes to that. But um, I guess back to your main point, I... I think it'll influence other studios to do something like this, mm -hmm. but I don't know if they'll find it to be cost effective. Okay. Because it's a really cool thing, but I think a lot of studios will say, let's just do some cutscenes that look really good instead. Okay. Uh, because it'll be cheaper, they may not have to have big names. Remedy has Microsoft Studios behind them. They've Very got. Good point. They a, have some money backing them. A big budget for this game. True. Uh, so 
I think yes and no. It depends on which studio you're going to. You're not going to see independent studios doing this. I understand. Yeah. Uh, hey, we, we've talked all about that this whole time, but there's also solid gameplay in, in this. Uh, was there anything, you know, staying away from cutscenes, staying away from the live action, uh, what about the gameplay stood out to you or something that you feel is really memorable about this? Um, I'm going to stay away from spoilers for this just in case you haven't played it. Yeah. Uh, I know people are circling around to it. The game itself, episodes included, yeah. uh, roughly 10 hours. So you can play through it a few times. Right. Uh, you are Jack Joyce, basically uh, a man that is disconnected from his, his brother and, and his best friend. He comes home to help his, his best friend, who is Paul Serene. That's Aiden Gillen's character, okay. uh, with a, a time experiment. And basically it goes wrong. They have a time machine that works, but it doesn't work perfectly. Okay. And it causes uh, basically a rift in time. And... That's going to cause the end of time, which is quite Well, that's not good. It's, it's definitely not good. Not good. Um, you can't have that. No. So in terms of uh, mechanics for the game, it's what you would expect if you've played Alan Wake. Okay. It, the the gunplay is good, not great. Mm -hmm. uh, generic weapons, uh, you don't have anything like the flashlight you had in Alan Wake, but you have time powers, which are freaking awesome. Yeah, you're not just using you know normal guns of this, are you? No, <laughs> and with the time powers... Uh, Basically, you get the time powers from this, this experiment that goes wrong. Uh, you're, they're called chronon particles, and Jack Joyce gets drenched in them, mm -hmm. uh, along with Paul Serene, and that's where... Drenched in time. Drenched huh. in time. That must be messy. Uh, yeah. Uh, if you play the game, you'll definitely find that out. I might have to find that out. Uh, I think gun mechanics, like I said, are okay. The weapon choice is okay, but they, they do it... Uh, it it's solid. I guess is a good way to put it. Right. The time powers, you can freeze time, you can uh, basically throw time bombs at people, there's a lot of hide and cover. The nice part about this is, like unlike Gears of War where you gotta hit a button to kind of go b behind a wall, if you're Jack Joyce and you're running around and you see a car that you want to hide behind, you just run up to it oh. and he automatically hides. It is a really slick thing that a lot of other shooters fail to get in a third person action game. Which is interesting because this isn't, you know, straight shooter. This is and what, from what it sounds like, it's covering shooting mechanics better than some purely dedicated shooter games do. It definitely does. They, uh, I mean, Remedy's only made like five games ever. Right. It's been like 20 years. They did Max <laughs> Payne 1 and 2, Alan Wake, uh, obviously, and, and there's another one that's escaping my memory, but it's a little bit older. Anyway, they nail what they do. Right. They They're really good at storytelling. Gotcha. And the balance with the time powers is awesome. Basically, you have a, if you use... Uh, like one of the time powers to force someone to, to freeze, you have a timer before you can use it again. But it doesn't feel like it's too long. The, okay. the pacing is perfect. And it, the game encourages you to use a different time power in okay. it. So if you use that, you're you're not stuck with that. So you, you're not all powerful. There's some limitations on what you can do. You totally. Gotta, you gotta, you gotta you know, maybe be a little strategic with the way you're using your time powers. Yes, and it's almost... Great. That's in, good to hear. In a way, reminiscent of the Arkham games with the free flow combat. Ah, uh, yes. Free someone, you can't use that for a bit. So use time dash to get to the other side of the room. Uh, makes it, sense. It, it makes you feel like you are the Flash. It is pretty awesome. <laughs> That's cool. Like, okay. there's a time if you... That, hold, you, got, you got me on that one. You got me hooked now. <laughs> if you hold the left bumper, you run, and you see everything slow motion around you. That's like, cool. everyone's, like, frozen. Right. It's... It's just, it's innovative that, like, a lot of games deal with, not a lot of games, but there's been a good deal that have dealt with time. Right. Um, going back in time, yada, yada. This is kind of fresh. Right. And I think they nailed it. Which is impressive because, the time, like you said, time is a long uh, sorry, long-standing mechanic in video games. Yeah, and they made it their own, and they made it feel like something that's never been touched before. That's, so, that's awesome to hear. Uh, like, you know, the game, like, like I said, no spoilers, but it, they left it with an opportunity for a sequel. Gotcha. Uh, that's probably years away. A lot of Alan Wake teases in there right. uh, for a, a new Alan Wake coming. Uh, so we'll, we'll see about that. But overall, 875, I put my stamp on it. I enjoyed it. I may play it again. Awesome. So like, wrapping up, if you have to make a decision right here, right now, what do you think Remedy is doing next? What do you think is their next project? Is it Alan Wake yeah, sequel? You think it is Alan Wake yeah, sequel? Yeah, full okay. Alan Wake sequel. Um, Enough it, hints dropped in this one that you think it's coming? I So I screenshot all my pictures for my reviews. Right. Uh, take a look at the bottom of the article. There's uh, a Night Springs TV in there. <laughs> it's awesome. There's a voice audition for Night Springs that's going on. It's one of like the, the extra diaries right, you can right, find. Right. Uh, I just don't think after doing something brand new like Quantum Break, a new IP, 
that they're going to do that again. And they take four to five years, it, it seems like, to get their games out. Right, so right. I think... Uh, they take their time, but they make it worth it. <laughs> totally worth it. Take your time with it. Don't rush these games out every year. Right, right. I think that uh, I would I would put my money on it, like that Alan Way 2 is basically coming out. Well, that is incredibly exciting. I can't wait for that yeah. if that's the case then. Absolutely. Um, so thumbs up, Remedy. You did a great job. I'm sure you'll be talking a lot about Alan Way 2 when or if it eventually comes out. Where can we find you on Twitter when you want to start blabbing to the world about that? <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm at Josiah D. Leroy for all my Twitter blabbings. That's right. And I'm Jeff Pavlak. I'm going to be on uh, Twitter at Jeffrey Pavs. I don't know too much about Alan Wake and Quantum Break, but I'll try and glean a little bit from you so that I can join in. I'll learn this guy. You're right. There we go. That'll, that'll be perfect. Uh, keep in touch with us on Twitter. Also follow all of our social media uh, accounts for the Geekovers. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook, YouTube, uh, MeTomo now, even Snapchat. Um, so for Josiah, I'm Jeff. Enjoy Quantum Break, people. Sounds like a good one. Movies deep? Are they, you kidding? I mean, hey, they create a living, breathing planet in the original. There's got to be, you know, it's more all generic t- terms though. They, Avatar, Pandora, Undertale. <laughs> yes, it's just it's like let's. It's like James Cameron was like, I want to make a movie that geeks will love, and it was just kind of went there. Well, they definitely have ways to go with it. I mean. There were two direct video sequels to Pocahontas too. So, but do they you know, have? We can, we can just rip those off <laughs> like I'm we sure did Pocahontas. History of direct video Pocahontas. Pocahontas.